Right, hello. This is a short video to show you the robot buggy I've been working on for quite a long time now. Um, the chassis here is from DF Robot. It's a Rob 0003 chassis. Um, it comes with the, the metal plate at the top there, sporting struts, the, the box at the bottom, the wheels, and also inside it, it came with the geared motors. So inside there are four geared motors. Um, they've got positions there for shaft encoders to be put on, which I haven't got. I've connected them up to an Argimoto shield, which is here. That can actually drive two motors, so what I've done is I've put them in parallel, so each side is being driven by one channel of the Argimoto shield. Um, the shield itself is mounted um, the right way up, but upside down for the way you're looking at it, because that's the way the mounting holes are in the plates. Um, so the, the plate on top has been pre-drilled for um, shields to be put on. Um, it also came with a battery box, and so what I've got here is um, five nickel metal hydride cells, giving me about six volts. The Argimoto shield has been connected to the Netduino PWM using um, opto-isolators, which means I've been able to isolate the, the voltage for driving the motors. So I found initially there were problems with the, uh, the Netduino being unstable when it was using the same supply as the motors. So I put the, the plate back on. The DF Robot um, buggy base, um, current price, which is at the beginning of 2013, I've seen on eBay for £35. So on top, um, we've got quite a few sensors on the front. So I've got some sharp analog distance sensors, and these were ten, about £10, £11 each at the moment, this is at 2013 prices. So I've got one looking forward, and I've got one on either side, so the robot can see what's, what it's going past. Um, I found the sensors weren't very good at detecting chair legs, because chair legs are quite small compared with the size of the, um, the, the buggy. And so then I've also put on a, a bar across the front, with two small micro switches, one on either side, so anything that hits, I think probably hear the clicking there, anything that hits the wheel it, it knows about, or if it hits something, bang on. The distance sensors are blind um, less than four centimetres, so potentially if something gets very close it won't know it's there, so that helps with that. Um, on the rear I've got some other sharp sensors, these are about £6 each. Um, these ones are digital sensors, and so if there's anything in a, a 10 centimetre range, they, they will switch. Um, again, there's a small blind spot, but here I've got them looking at what's behind the wheel. I found these weren't very very reliable at the front. Um, having them at the front, the buggy kept crashing into chair legs. So I've just used them at the back now, and the software can, will be able to decide whether to go backwards when it reaches an obstacle in the front. Um, on top, oh sorry, um, there's a switch here for the power supply for the, the motors, so this is separate from the Netduino's power supply. Um, on top I've got um, an SPI board um, with, using a 74595 and it's got some LEDs on it to tell me what the robot is trying to do at the moment. I take off the, the top, I've just secured this very loosely so I can remove it. So again, this plate on top came as part of the, the robot buggy base. Um, so inside there's an absolute rat's nest of wiring and I've got here the Netduino at the bottom and on top I've got the Fixit Shield which I put a post on the, the forum some time ago about and on the Fixit Shield, which is grown since the original post, um, I've got the Opto Isolators just fitted in here um, these, um, as well as isolating the power supply, they also mean that the wheels won't run at startup because the, the weak pull ups in the Netduino don't activate the auto isolators at startup. And over here, I've got a, a farm of servo connectors which I'm using to connect to the sharp distance sensors. Um, the Netduino itself, I'm powering using a, a 5 volt emergency charger which has a USB output for charging phones and other things and what I do is I usually mount that on top and I've got a short charging wire that I plug into the back into the Netduino itself. Um, that's about it. Um, 
I guess the next episode we'll try and show it running.